Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about the correlation between estrogen and other stress hormones like cortisol and autoimmune conditions. All right, so first and foremost, what is autoimmunity? So at least according to WebMD and Wikipedia and sources like that, Autoimmunity generally refers to an aberrated immune system where it is attacking its own healthy cells and tissues. And any disease-like state or degenerative issue that has that underlying issue where the body is supposedly attacking itself is considered to be an autoimmune disease. And there are actually many diseases that fall under this category. Everything from HIV and AIDS to Hashimoto's, MS or multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, amongst many others. Unfortunately, like most degenerative diseases, at least here in the West, only a very small portion of the larger picture of the pathology of autoimmune disease is ever shared. In other words, if you spend any time at all reading various medical journals, clinical studies, and other sorts of medical literature, you'll find out that there's actually tons that we know about autoimmunity, but again, only a very small portion of that is ever shared. So obviously there's a lot I could talk about when it comes to autoimmunity. I actually have other videos on the subject where I even dive into some of the more psychosomatic or potential metaphysical causes, so mental and emotional stress-related causes, as well as environmental causes. But one particular subject or feature of autoimmunity that is rarely ever talked about is the relationship between the hormones in your body and autoimmunity. And there's two particular hormones that play huge roles in autoimmunity and that largely contribute to all of the different degenerative symptoms of autoimmune conditions of all sorts that are rarely ever talked about, and that is primarily estrogen and cortisol. Now, really quick though, before I dive into how it is exactly that estrogen and cortisol contribute to autoimmune-like conditions, let's first clarify more thoroughly what autoimmunity actually is. So as I mentioned in the first part of this video, Western or conventional medicine refers to autoimmune conditions as an immune system that's generally attacking its own body. When in fact, I think this is actually an incomplete description at least of what autoimmunity actually is. Ultimately, autoimmunity is a hyperactive immune system. It's an immune system that's on overdrive. And what's even more interesting is that autoimmunity or an overactive immune system often accompanies immunodeficiencies. So it's a very interesting situation where supposedly the immune system's on overdrive attacking and destroying its own cells and tissues. However, there's a large presence of immunodeficiency-like conditions. For example, people with AIDS tend to get sick more easily. So supposedly their immune system's on overdrive attacking itself, yet they're more susceptible to things like the common cold and flu and other very simple health issues. So that is one thing to keep in mind as we head forward. Getting back to estrogen and cortisol and their roles, and this will explain how it is that there's a potential hyperactive immune-like condition that's also accompanying immunodeficiencies. This will all make sense by the end of this video. But looking first and foremost at estrogen, really quick though before we look at its physiological effects, just keep in mind that estrogen has many roles in autoimmunity and not all of them come back to the own estrogen produced in your body. For example, the environmental estrogens, xenoestrogens that I talk about all the time. So these are things like various plastics, the toxic substances in plastics and various herbicides and pesticides and a lot of toxic chemicals in our environment, things like radiation are oftentimes even more potent in their immunosuppressive effects and inflammatory effects than estradiol, which is the most potent form of estrogen your body produces. So that's something else to understand and keep in mind that it's not just the estrogen that your body is making, but also the environmental estrogens, which probably explains why there's a pretty paralleling increase or significant rise of autoimmune conditions with the increasingly toxic nature of our modern world. So the more toxic our environment is becoming, the more plastics we're using, the more pesticides we're spraying, the more radiation we're in contact with from things like our phones, EMFs, etc. It just so happens to appear that a lot of the autoimmune conditions and immunodeficiencies are rising 
correspondingly or in parallel to the rise of the toxic estrogens in our environment. So with all of this in mind, let's take a look now at the physiological mechanisms behind estrogens immunosuppressive effects or its potential role in autoimmune conditions. So there are actually a couple of different ways in which estrogen contributes to autoimmune conditions or the pathology of autoimmunity. First and foremost, let's understand the fact that estrogen has a negative feedback loop with cortisol, meaning that both environmental dietary estrogens and the estrogens produced in your own body under stress stimulate the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. And cortisol is a classic immunosuppressive stress hormone that has many degenerative effects when it's chronically or overly produced. The second major thing that estrogen does in contributing to autoimmunity is at the same time that it's stimulating your adrenal glands to produce cortisol, it turns off the negative feedback loop between the adrenal glands and the pituitary, which would otherwise tell your brain that your body is producing too much cortisol. So in this way, estrogen blocks the communication between the adrenals and the pituitary, so that way, instead of your body Body, down regulating the excess production of cortisol, your adrenal glands are going to continually produce tons of cortisol, even if it doesn't need to be producing it. And this is one of the major ways in which the environmental estrogens really stress out your body is because even if your body is not necessarily under threat, your brain doesn't get that message. The pituitary doesn't get that signal. So your body is continually producing that excess cortisol. Not to mention that this whole mechanism will be exacerbated and much worse if you were consuming something like polyunsaturated fats, which are not just estrogenic, they're also directly immunosuppressive. And they're immunosuppressive in a couple of different ways. The polyunsaturated fats not only stimulate this whole negative feedback loop of estrogen and cortisol and disrupting the pituitary signaling, but the polyunsaturated fats can actually block your thyroid from secreting thyroid hormone and its transport throughout the body to the cells. And the thyroid hormone is essential for governing proper immune function. So metabolism generally precedes the function of the immune system, but if your thyroid can't work, your metabolism is not going to work, and that's going to negatively affect the functioning of the immune system. So this is how estrogen primarily contributes to the immunodeficiencies that are so prevalent. There is a direct suppression of the immune system that is observed in autoimmune-like conditions. The general weakness of the body, the susceptibility to viral infections, pathogens, etc., generally just having a weak immune system overall. However, to explain the tissue breakdown that occurs in autoimmune-like conditions, like let's say rheumatoid arthritis, where the tissues and tendons are being attacked and destroyed basically. This has a lot to do with the chronic production of cortisol via estrogen. You see, estrogen and cortisol are actually both catabolic to the tissues. So if your body's producing tons of estrogen and cortisol, Taking first a look at cortisol. Cortisol breaks down your muscle tissue and even organs and glands and, and even your ligaments or your skin to produce glucose to cope with the stress response. So if your body's producing tons of cortisol chronically because of the elevated estrogen, your body's perceiving that as a stress, that cortisol starts wasting tissue through gluconeogenesis to create glucose to cope with that stress providing glucose to the stressed out cells and tissues. So that's just one way that the excess estrogen and cortisol leads to the tissue destruction or cell degradation in autoimmunity. However, estrogen also breaks down tissues in the body as well. What estrogen does is it actually activates the enzyme that breaks down hyaluronic acid, which is a acid that makes up the cartilage and collagen in your body. So higher levels of estrogen means a greater rate of collagen breakdown. And in fact, during pregnancy, it's the chronically high estrogen that causes the tissue in the cervix to break down so that way the child can pass through the womb or the vaginal opening. And of course, the natural consequence of this tissue breakdown is the production of antibodies. So this generally explains why there's a 
higher level of antibodies and autoimmunity because the elevated levels of estrogen and cortisol that are breaking down the tissues in your body, your immune system is going to respond to that by producing antibodies. So this is why the common idea of autoimmunity is that it's the immune system attacking itself and the elevated levels of antibodies are a good biomarker of that. But just looking at the elevated levels of antibodies is overlooking the causative factor for that tissue damage and breakdown. So that's also going to probably explain the inflammation that's so prevalent in autoimmunity. However, estrogen contributes to inflammation in other ways as well, as well as chronically high cortisol. Estrogen, for example, can lead to edema, which is the swelling of the cells and tissues by increasing your cell's affinity to water. And this can, again, lead to inflammation down the line. And autoimmunity tends to be accompanied by things like edema in general and inflammation. So that might also explain the inflammation that tends to occur in all of these autoimmune conditions. And one last thing that's probably worth mentioning is that chronically elevated levels of cortisol actually can completely catabolize the thymus gland, which is an incredibly important gland for proper immune function. So now obviously this is not everything that could be talked about in regards to autoimmunity. There are tons of other factors involved, but these are some of the important major key players I think are not talked about so oftenly or rarely if at all, but are huge key players in the pathology of autoimmunity and what causes a lot of the symptoms to occur, like the tissue degradation, the breaking down of the body, the suppression of the immune system, the low energy, the inflammation, pain, and the general degeneration of the body. So obviously this is not everything that could be talked about in regards to autoimmunity, but again, I think these are some of the less commonly talked about things that are actually some of the easiest things to fix or some of the simplest things to fix, I should say. Simple does not always imply easy. However, looking at the causative factors, what you could do to start to correct some of these underlying imbalances or causative factors are actually very simple things. So looking first at the estrogens, obviously the modern world is full of estrogenic substances and chemicals. Learning what those are, which is easy to do, you just have to hop online and search various xenoestrogens, estrogen mimicking substances. And again, some of the most common ones are going to be your plastics, a lot of your conventional household cleaning products, personal care products, a lot of your conventional clothing, anything generally made of plastic, even the BPA-free stuff, tend to mimic estrogen, as well as a wide variety of different medications, drugs, and of course, alcohol. So removing all of the xenoestrogens, estrogen mimicking substances from your life, which is simple, it might not be easy to do, but it's basically just going back to a more natural way of life, using things like wood and various safe metals, glass, natural substances instead of these plastics, simplifying your life actually, eating a more traditional style diet. You know, look at how your great, great grandparents ate and eat a little bit more like that and you're already taking huge steps towards a less estrogenic lifestyle and diet, which will beneficially affect your immune system and your metabolism. So I would definitely recommend, again, hopping online and do a bit of research and find out all the various estrogenic substances in your environment and your diet. We also talk about this a lot on the YouTube channel, so reference other videos like this one for further information about things you can remove from your life that are estrogenic, that are probably suppressing your immune system. But again, the big ones are going to be the plastics, the personal care products, the conventional ones at least, a lot of the conventional household cleaning products, and of course, all of the polyunsaturated fats, which are estrogenic and immunosuppressive. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is obviously take proactive steps to lower the cortisol. Now, if you're removing the estrogens from your life, that's going to be huge because again, estrogen places a stress on the adrenals to produce more cortisol. So in addition to lowering the estrogen, you could take further proactive steps to lower the cortisol or you could take supplements to also lower estrogen as well. So some of the best anti-estrogen herbs are going to be things like nettle root, which can lower estrogen levels significantly, milk thistle, 
and pinepon. Those are fantastic herbs, and I think essential herbs for people living in the estrogenic modern world. In addition to those, I'll be making a future video on some of the best things you can do to lower estrogen, so stay tuned for that one as well. Otherwise, getting back to cortisol, keep in mind that cortisol is the classic stress hormone, meaning that it is the primary stress hormone that is secreted when your body is under chronic stress. And estrogen is just one type of stress. So you're going to want to work on stress at all angles. So definitely be sure to reference our other videos on stress. We have tons of them that cover everything from how to handle psychological stress to dietary stress and other lifestyle stressors. But my favorite three herbs for lowering cortisol are ashwagandha, ginkgo biloba, and cordyceps. And one last final tip, just an interesting tip that could be useful to start implementing because it's super simple, would actually be the supplementation of cacao powder or chocolate. And this is because one of the key features of autoimmunity is tissue breakdown. So is it really autoimmunity? Is it really that your immune system's on overdrive or is it that your body is just responding negatively to all of the estrogenic, stressful, and toxic substances in our environment, in our diet, and those are the things that are actually breaking down the body and the so-called autoimmunity is just the effect of that. In my opinion, it's probably the latter. However, one thing that tends to occur that creates a vicious cycle is that as your tissues start to break down because of the stressful things that we talked about earlier is the liberation of free fatty acids. And these free fatty acids tend to increase more estrogen and suppress your metabolism and immune system even more. So simple things like, again, cacao, as well as other substances like niacinamide, which is a substrate of niacin, can actually help prevent the release of these free fatty acids or the peroxidation of the fats in your body. So something, again, as simple as cacao and basic antioxidants or something like niacinamide, these are super simple and safe supplements that can help at least on one aspect of it. So we've covered some of the more primary underlying causative factors, but other things that you're gonna to wanna to do is obviously try to protect your body from the oxidative damage that can occur from the estrogens, the cortisol, and the tissue breakdown or the catabolism of your body. And again, simple antioxidants like cacao or chocolate, things like niacinamide and other antioxidants like vitamin E could be very helpful and protective. So that's all I wanted to share in this video. Again, autoimmunity is a huge topic, so I'll probably be making various videos on the subject. And over time, I'll create a playlist so that way you can sort of piece all these together. I will take the other videos I've made on autoimmunity and put them to a playlist so that way you at least have a few of the videos we have on the subject now all in one place. Definitely be sure to watch the other videos we have to get a bigger picture painted for you on how to treat it. But hopefully this video has brought some insight as to what's actually going on with autoimmune conditions. I wouldn't necessarily say that you're a victim to genetics or you know, that your body just hates itself as much as I would say that probably your environment, your diet, and other aspects of your lifestyle are stressful and it's breaking down your body because it's creating a stress response. And it's those stress substances like estrogen and cortisol that tend to catabolize the body. So taking proactive steps to modify your lifestyle and diet, as we talked about in this video, to lower the estrogen and cortisol can be a huge leap forward for therapy in autoimmune conditions. Anyways, if you've enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody that might find it helpful or useful. And if you're interested in learning more, again, be sure to watch the other videos we have on autoimmunity and immunity in general. And for supplementing with any of the herbs I recommended throughout this video for lowering the estrogen and cortisol, be sure to check out our blog and our online tonic herb shop. Both of those you can find in the description box below.